Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central, the website for everything .NET Core. Today I'm going to take a stab on writing a .NET Core application which can run in a Docker container. Um, .NET Core inherently supports uh, Linux and containers. I'll just try to create a simple application and run it in a container. So first uh, what I did is I downloaded and installed uh, Windows client for Docker from hub.docker.com. If you don't have a login, then you'll have to create a login and log into it. And then you can just uh, get started here. Once you click it, it'll take you to the next page and it'll start the download and you can install Docker container. Once it is installed, ensure that it is running. It'll come in the uh, icon of Windows 10 and uh, for me I had a issue that after installation it was not starting uh, saying it, I don't have enough memory this is a 4 gig uh, RAM machine and then I had to go and I had to change the memory to just a gig once I did that it just started working so this is just an FYI so currently my docker is running and I'm going to show uh, a couple of commands which are uh, probably the most widely used command uh, in Docker, at least for devs like us. Um, so I'm going to try this out. So the first command that we usually use is Docker images, which will show all the images available in the current Docker. As you can see, I have few images because I've been playing around with the container. And then the next one is Docker PS, which shows all the container currently running, which I don't have any. And PS A to show uh, the container which are not even running. Currently, I don't have both. Next thing I'm going to do is create a .NET Core application. And then from there, I'll just use the default implementation of the .NET Core console and uh, build it to create a Docker image and then run it as a container. Uh, this is a simple application with hello world, I'll just say hello Docker world and uh, then the next thing that I would need is to have a Docker file uh, which will be used to um, build and then you know create the Docker image. A Docker file is uh, nothing but uh, a file with all the Docker instructions. Oh, I clicked the wrong. So I'm going to create a new file here and it'll be just a docker file. I think the name can be anything uh, but uh, because the docker build takes the argument as the file name but I think the standard is to name it as docker file so I'll just follow that. I don't need to, so I'll just close one. Okay, next I'll just edit this file in Notepad. And uh, write few of the uh, Docker commands. So th there is a, in the Docker uh, website itself, there is a simple example of uh, the .NET uh, core application Docker file. I'll I'll provide the URL of that in my blog post, which I'll put it in the description. I just copied pasted that and did some modifications. So I'm just going to copy paste it here and, and explain you what exactly I did. So first thing is uh, here, I am downloading the .NET Core runtime and setting it as a base and then setting up the work directory as slash app and then I'm getting the uh, .NET SDK. Uh, the SDK is needed for you know building and uh, publishing 
the DLLs and then I'll copy the solution and the uh, docker dot demo solution in the project into the current folder do a dot net restore for restoring all the packages and then uh, run the um, build uh, the dot net build then do a publish and finally I'm just going to copy the output of the publish folder into the app folder and then set up the entry point as the docker.demo.dll so here uh, from is from where to take the initial image and here I'm getting two of the images essentially one is the SDK one is the runtime and then uh, run is for executing any command so here I'm using run to executing the dotnet commands and then uh, copy is for copying file uh, and entry point is where to start now I'm going to save this file the new thing and next thing I'm going to do is uh, go and um, run the docker build command so I'll start with docker build hyphen t the image name so I'll give it as uh, docker demo and then which file to use so uh, before that I'll just I'll have to go to the folder so cd docker.demo then wrong place okay I'll, I'll just go with because it did not create a solution folder so I'll, I'll just go back so hopefully this should work the other folder should not create any issue well it might because it will try to copy no there's just one solution file so we should be good let me run this Okay, looks like it was successful. Now let's do a Docker images. Yeah, and I can see the Docker demo image is ready. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is now uh, create a Docker container from this image. Now when we create an image we can uh, sorry when we create a container we can provide a name also but uh, I just mostly go with the default which is docker itself will give a name and it has a lot of funny names which it gives so let's just do that so it created now if we do docker ps hyphen a we should be able to see the container is created and it's not running but it's created yeah we see it created and uh, 
this is the name now next thing i'm going to do is uh, uh, start the container so this and i'm going to start in interactive mode so that the console.write time is visible to us and here we go we can see that hello docker world the output of the um, program is shown here i will do the docker ps again we see that the container is gone because uh, uh, it's not running right now because my console application is dead so i can still do docker ps slash a and my container is still it's just exited but uh, it's still in place so i can reuse it so this is a very small intro to how to run uh, .NET core application in docker container uh, a docker container running in windows uh, another thing i probably did not mention but i am running the docker container uh, in my pc in uh, uh, Linux container mode so you can see it's a switch to Windows container because I'm running in Linux container and the reason for that is usually in when we deploy in AWS or Azure we will be running uh, in a Linux box and a Linux container so it's, it's better to keep it as close uh, possible to the production or QA environment and uh, yeah that's my introduction uh, in next video I'm going to talk a little bit more about a long running console application, having a background thread and what are the different uh, nuances running a background thread application in Docker. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.